I don't play piano for anybody else except for myself to achieve a sense of oneness. This sense of oneness I think is very important in a modern living. We're living in a changing time and in a changing time you will find that we get our attention taken away, dispersed. You get an apps here, you get an apps there and you get a sort of over information overload but these are externally driven externally driven and I come to realize really that America no longer the West can no longer provide a lot of the solutions to modern living that's why you find the emergence of yoga coming about people are going to meditation and they are all moving to Asian values and one reason why I want to explain to you is that I play the piano as, and you, you can see I, I put here on the video along, alongside me, that I play it really to achieve a sense of oneness with the piano. One thing I find why is, especially if you're an adult, I think you must get away from this mindset that, that you, you have to to do something for somebody to enjoy, for somebody to appreciate, for somebody. It is good for you to really, my suggestion, to reach the inner self. The inner you is now not being really understood. Everything is taken out of you. You are focusing outside, you take as you. You got there's so much pressure on you, right, to show people you are somebody. And But then in the process, you forgot about the inner you, the inside you. And it's very important that you also nurture the inner you when you play the piano. It's not difficult to learn to play the piano. It's actually very simple. It's just that, you know, well, well, I mean, maybe, maybe I should play it simple, but it, you, it requires some effort. But if you do it on a basis of for yourself, for your self-progress, don't forget you owe it to yourself to improve yourself. Nobody else has a responsibility except you for yourself. And I find through piano, 
that, well, why the piano? I was fortunate that I was one of the family that we had the piano. And the piano that I'm using now, will, I will be using right to the end of my life because I find that the piano sounds really reverberate with me and I'm used, I, I know my piano well. So this is where I find that the key thing really is you must, first of all, if you want to learn the piano, is you playing for yourself. Very importantly, for to realize the words, the meaning. And I use the word, the art of love, the art piano song, in a deep, meaningful way. That you find songs really, when we words, sometimes when you hear them, you, you find you're motivated by it. You become one with the song. You are lost in the song, in the words of the song. So in the same way, you could, that motivates you to play that song that, that you are, you know, for, the, for that moment in life that you are really, you know, mystified by, or we used to mystify by. And therefore you then have the motivation to learn it. And that motivation is very important. And from there, why do I choose the piano rather than any other instrument? First of all, I think it is it is painless when you play. There's no pain at all. You play the guitar, it's painful on the left, unless you get used to it. Then also you don't have to blow. We soon are good, but then you have to blow, you have to have a breathing system and you have to sustain that flow of air. Perhaps piano is, well, it comes to me intuitively. I, 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 I see the piano, I, I know how to use it. But most importantly is you'll find when I play the piano, I'm deeply into it. I'm lost into the world of that music at the time when I play it. I find that it is another way of self-expression. I get, I become one with the piano. And you realize in any field, in, any, in the arts, any arts form, whether it is sword fighting or whether it is uh, any, any game, any instrument related, you have to be really good, you have to be at one with it, you have to become it, you have to become one with the piano. And it's not, that, it's not that you play the piano, but the piano also resonates in such a way because you understand the instrument so well that it also in, it, it responds in a way that you like, that, that you expect it. But I think it's very important, this subjective element that, that it produces the music that you like. So I don't play for it outside. I, I record it partly because for myself to listen, you know, when I'm tired, I like to listen to the way I play, and I enjoy listening to, to, to the way I play. And of course, you find that this is something which I want to get across to you, that in the world today is very much disintegrated. You find in America today it is really, you know, it's, it's, it is, it's such a big mess that is becoming. Why? Because they forgot that the whole world actually is one. This oneness concept is lost. It's you and me and you know and using military to to police and to to kill your own protesters would not would not be right. That would be absolutely wrong. So this oneness thing I think is an important thing. And but first of all, you, you begin with yourself that you should try and be at one with yourself. And when I play the piano, I'm lost into it. I come to the stage where I once in a while I feel certain music. And that's why that's for when I start to, to compose my own music. I have got some of my own composition which which you may hear, right? When, when you when you play you, YouTube, I got a lot of videos on YouTube on Sun Tzu and, and on my travel to China. And I use those music so that I don't infringe copyright rules. On the other hand, you'll find that if you have a piano, there's a, another advantage is you don't have to leave the house to play in a, in a group, it is a self-contained instrument. You could play piano solo by yourself. And then you find that it is really beautiful. You put it at home and you don't have to go out to, to, to you know. But the important thing is that you must realize the piano is really a home thing. It's good for the home to have, to have a, a musical instrument. And I don't think that you should really spend a lot of money over it. You don't have to. If you, look at it for over a long period 
or time. It, 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 it is actually a worthwhile investment for you to realize the oneness within you, that you can become one with it. And if you have been my student, or you have been staying in Hall 12 in NTU, way back in the 2010 to before 2010 in Hall 12, then you would probably hear in the morning that I hear me playing. I used, when I stay in Hall 12, I used to wake up. The first thing I do was go for a long walk, and after that, coming back, or my wife prepared the breakfast, I would be playing the piano. And I play the piano for about at least one hour a day. And, but it's really for myself. Really in order that I can, I can feel at one with the wordless world. Music is wordless. It communicates. But the whole fo focus is not, not to, to, to really uh, go for exhibition and to play for people, but really the focus is on doing it as, as a daily activity, get my fingers working. And somehow I believe that when you exercise your fingers, now a lot of people go for walks and, and all that, they forgot about the, the little fingers. And I think the fingers are important to exercise it, to, 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 be, at, to be at one with it and to, and to get it to, they call it muscular memory, right? To, mem to, to be able to mem memorize it. But I don't go by memory, I go by feeling. That's why the last song of this series I put there it is on feeling. And I think feeling is extremely important to able to feel yourself and understand yourself. The inner you, I believe, is missing in this whole equation of our life today. There's too much outward orientation, external matters, but the inner you, the inner self, the who you are and, and and then understanding yourself and to be at one with yourself. And this oneness is what I want to emphasize through this video. And I illustrate it to showing that I myself have, you know, do it and how I do it and, and how, how I actually experience it. I will share with you in, in due course. But the key thing is the meaning in life is only meaningful in relation to yourself, to you. You have to make life meaningful for you and you have to understand yourself. Very few people really understood themselves. They, they, they don't know what are their own strengths, what are their own weaknesses and given that what, what are the what are real opportunities for them and what are the threats yeah, that, that, that would, would, would threaten their, their livelihood. But the world is really in a phase of transition, it's changing. It's changing. And I believe that this change is inevitable because you know, in America, some Americans are still living in the past. They still believe that America still dominate, that America still is still... But the world has changed. I spent 10 years across, traveling across China and I, I understood very well the changes that is coming to, to the world. We will rise in China. But it temporarily has been, been halted by this trade war, by this all this you know, problem that you, that you are facing today. You know it better. I mean, you got so much uh, information and news on it. But the key point is you must not forget yourself. You must not forget in the midst of all this that you also need to be at one with yourself. Then you can be at one with your family. And your family, your wife, your children, 
and all that, all as one whole, one, one family is also oneness of family. Then for the oneness of family, you spread the oneness of the estate of the organization, and and this basic fundamentals is what we find that in the modern world, in the rush to modernize. And I don't know whether it is really, really modernization or, or retrogression in, in, in looking at it with hindsight. That we forgot something very important, that is humanity. That we are all human beings. It's important. And the most interesting I found really as a professor, right, in doing research is that the artificial intelligence, we call it artificial, but the neural network, the software, actually learns the same way that our brain does, our neural functioning, that, that we need training and the whole idea. And by doing research on, on artificial intelligence, I realized really what, what it means, or how the brain really works. And, and it's because the software that I was interested in is called neural processing. And actually, it actually functions on a basis and model after the brain in the same way. In the same way, for piano, right? You have to practice. You don't see practice at a drudgery. It's actually a very interesting thing for you to to build a self in a self confidence. And you find that as you do slowly, your body will adjust, will adapt. Your fingers will start to learn to be noble, nimble. Believe me, your fingers will begin to be nimble. It doesn't matter what age you want to learn to play the piano. It doesn't matter. The key thing is you must have the time. Number two, you must want to do something for yourself. You want to realize your potential. And you feel that inner, inner voice that, that, that urges you to, 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 to play the piano. Give yourself that opportunity. And especially in the, if you are like me, where there's a, I have time on hand,
you will find also that music, or maybe I put it more simply, sounds are very important for motivating people, for getting people, the spirit of people to, to so this is uh, in Malay, I, I, I like this Malay example, Gotong Royong, to get the people working together as a village, as community, and if you find that if you want to, 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 to get a group together, you, you play the compound, and you find in Ho Chao, I get the student the opportunity to learn to use a compa so that we, they can do as cheerleaders. When we, do, we go and cheer a team to play, they will use a compa in order to, to get the people working, everybody playing it. And, and there's participation, there's a sense of oneness. And that's important in a community. America is, is really, you, know, you find that there's this racist element of protest. Why? Because they, they want the people protest, but they want the, a sense of oneness. And sadly, the president doesn't see it that way. It's so important, really, to understand that even Sun Tzu wrote 2,500 years ago that to get an army going, you need to use the drum and the gong. And you find that I give examples of this in my out of war courses. Right? I will emphasize on this coordination. And through my research, too, in company, too, that the key point in planning really is coordination. But for Piano. Piano can be an instrument, part of a orchestra and part of a team. But the emphasis really I like to put to you is to get the sense of oneness, to for, for, a, for a team to work together. And but more importantly to start with yourself, to get yourself to be in touch to be, for you to be at one with yourself.
Another interesting thing you can learn about the piano is the fact that it can also influence your thinking on other aspects of life. In other words, you can use the piano as a metaphor. For example, I give a very classic example on leadership. All of us are concerned about being a leader. And one thing very interesting is that you find Mao Zedong, of all people, Mao Zedong actually make a reference to the piano on leadership. Right? He says one thing that, team, what is teamwork? Teamwork is such that you find that the fingers take time. We can't press our fingers all at one time to play a tune. So in, in other words, what Mao Zedong is saying, through the analogy of the piano, is that different fingers should come in at the right time in order to get a melody going. So he could relate, and that's the mind of a strategy. He could relate metaphorically, even the piano, with the art of leadership. Now for me, when I see the piano, right, I see it right, in, a, in a Chinese way too. You know, that you know, we have this yin and yang, and you see the piano, there are keys, black and white. Uh, two sets, black and white, and with these black and white keys, you could create any sort of music. Like Sun Tzu said, you know, and of course, during his time, the notes, were, there were five key notes. He was said that, you know, just five key notes, you could create multitude of music. And music is not limited, and that is the true meaning of innovation. Given concept, right, to be able to reuse, remodel, and rechange, and readjust in order to produce something new, something different, something useful. So piano has other meaning to, to our life. The key point is, if you have the time, I think it's a, you're bound to have time if you find time. Because you need to relax, you need to be in touch with the inner you. This is the missing thing. No handphone can enable you to, all the programs and all the apps and all that have you reached the inner you. The inner you has to be realized. And you find it is very gratifying that it may, it may take one month to learn the tune, but in one month, when we start to play, express it, don't try and copy or model after someone, no. Try to play the way that you, you like it to be. And you can start with, with, with a song that you have always loved hearing, and then the music that goes with it. Trust me, you will, you will definitely make progress if you start earnestly. But it's not a matter of money. It's, it's a matter of getting up the, the basic instrument, then have it tuned, and then therefore to start on, on, on step one. It's in the, I mean, a lifelong journey like I have. I started playing when I was a young boy. And then from there I started to, to love it. And then, but I played on my own for my own enjoyment, for my own realization, for my own at this age of my life, to feel a sense of oneness.
idea of oneness, I first raised it in my book, Reminiscences of Ancient Strategies, in the in in artwork. And you find that it is really the, the key concept is, is the important one in terms of being one. And being one means what? Means that to, to for example an army, how can an army fight well? An army fight well when it when it fights like one person, oneness. So this concept of oneness is something which I want to convey to you. For me, playing the piano is to realize this feeling of, of oneness. And you find the songs that I have listed down in this video and playing it behind me that you can see is really songs that are related to love. They are on the same theme, on different aspects of love. And these are songs that I've been playing for a long time. And I, I, I want to convey that to you that to achieve this sense of oneness, for me, is to be with the piano. And you find as you play the piano, that you play these songs, that you, you choose a song on the, on the same theme. And you find that as you play along, you get a strong sense of feeling. Yes, that the songs relate to each other. And of course, you find if you go on further, and you if you go on playing the piano, you will find that there are songs that that you you are thematically the same. The other song, one of the song that I like very much is "A Time for Us," and really, it is something that is deep and, and profound. That you know, that we are loved ones that do find the time to, to be together to, to each other. And then of course the last one that I put there in the list you find 1 to 15, alright? The one is feelings. And ultimately the whole world is about, about a sense of feeling. And therefore I'd like you to take a look at it and then listen to it as I explain this concept of, of oneness to you. Here I explain about getting oneness via the piano. On the other hand, right, oneness can be achieved by you, by a swordsman using a sword. In other words, the warrior and a sword and a swordsman is one. Her e. So uh, my Chinese word for for this uh, topic would be, kang ching he yi. That means you can kang ching he yi. You are you are one with the piano. It is not it's not you playing the piano. You and the piano combine together to bring out songs, and that you realize this oneness. And oneness can be realized. Not only through piano, but it can be you can rely to whatever you are doing, achieving the sense of oneness. For example, a ballet dancer, a ballet dancer, for a ballet dancer, it is the body, the body train the body to the stage where the body becomes as an instrument that you're at one with your body. You could you could perform those those dancers as as a ballerina, because you're you're at one with the body. For a cook. It can be the cook can also realize the oneness. Those you find that those top cook who really enjoy the profession and really into the cooking, they could produce food of a quality that is very difficult to imitate because he is at one. He realized the oneness and the oneness with, with cooking. Artists too, artists with the brush, and even they realize a certain oneness. They can, the, the, the the art the, the the brush will flow and. The brasswork that produced is something that is very hard to imitate. So this sense of oneness, I believe, for adult learners, especially adult learners, I don't think you should differentiate between yourself being young or being old or being very old. You can pick your skill up anytime, but the key thing is to have the confidence in yourself that you can bring yourself to achieve a sense of oneness. And I explain through using using piano as this piano is instrument which I want I, I like to play to, to a level where I could become one with the piano and this sense of oneness is a good feeling a profound feeling in the sense that you are lost into the world your, your world of music you have become one with the music you 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 you, you, you put a piano you forget about everything else that surrounds you actually you are so immersed into it and it's such a good feeling in a world that is Today, there's full of chaos, full of problems, full of trouble.
at times seems to be falling apart. And you know, America wants to decouple China from the world economy. And from and a world full of scams. And these people create a scam. They don't realize the, the, the severe damage they're doing to the world. And all that. And it's not surprising that you are you're going to be upset, you're going to be disoriented, and you're going to be disillusioned. But as I always tell people, my students, for example, that the first most important point is you must have self-love. You must have confidence in yourself. For you are the most important person in the world as far as you are concerned. You are responsible for your own development and for your own self-care. And for me, my approach has always been to make sure that I function as a whole being. The wholeness. I don't allow myself to be disintegrated into bits and pieces. And, 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 but my, my cardinal point is, the, the functioning point is, believe in myself. It is so important. And that's the beginning of oneness. The oneness comes from yourself feeling you are within yourself as a whole, as a one person. Then, having achieved the sense of oneness, you, you extend that oneness and confidence in yourself towards playing the piano. And you become one with the piano. And it may take some time, progressively, as I mentioned earlier. Begin with a song that you like and you love to hear and you like to express it. Self-expression is another very important aspect of us as human beings. That, that we learn to be, learn to express our own views, our own thinking, and don't try to imitate somebody else. In fact, I'm, I do not encourage people to be a follower. You know, follower. It's, it's such, a, such a sexy term now. Why? Because ultimately your purpose is to develop yourself by following, but, but not blind copying. You are unique. There is no second thumbprint that's like mine. The whole world of billions of people, there's no second thumbprint that's the same as my own. So it is for you. And I find that if you were to take this attitude and try I won't like to use the word spiritual, but essentially we are spiritual beings. That ultimately, when, when, at the end of the day, when you leave this world, you live as a spiritual being. So this, this aspect of it, this nurturing the spiritual self, the inner self, is one reason why I, I play the piano. I, I said, when I play piano, it's a sense of wonder. I'm lost into that world. It can be classical, it can be a pop song, it can be... But I tend to want to prefer, at, at a sitting, to play songs that share the same thing the same theme for, for myself. And you'll find also that ultimately, I'm not here to, to teach you piano lessons. I don't teach piano lessons. But I'm not here to, to share with you because the question has been asked of me. And I want to make it clear that you can do it. It's not difficult. As I said again, it's never difficult to learn piano. It's painless to do so. And at the most, it is sound quite right.
if the song didn't sound as you play, didn't sound quite right, maybe you're on a path to another song, to another version of the same song. We call that improvisation. Right, back to Duana's Via the Piano. What's, to what stage should you try and reach in playing the piano and to say that you, 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 are, you are satisfied with yourself? One of my points is that you should play the piano, play the song to the point where you don't feel that you are really playing the piano. You, you and the piano are actually one in producing the sound that, you know, as I say for a swordsman, uh, the swordsman try to reach a stage where he no longer feels that he is holding the sword, that the sword and him is one. So you can reach that stage in playing the piano and then you, you realize a sense of uh, the feeling, the sensation you get is, a, is a really a good, sat satisfying one. Now I've posted a, a, another video on, uh, on, on this on YouTube and that is on the meaning of life. And in life we must try and find some meaning and I think the real meaning in life is really to realize yourself, self-realization, realize who you really are, your capabilities and understanding yourself. And that I think is missing a lot, despite the fact that we are now more educated, there are much more programs and all that, but self-realization requires self-reflection. And self-reflection means that nobody else can do it except yourself. And what I believe is very important in achieving self-realization is to first of all recognize that we, we tend to create an, an ego of ourselves, an I. An I that is, you know, can give us a lot of problems that, that society demands that you are, you are, you are put check tag and you have to do this, you have to do that, and you expect it. Now, those can create a lot of stress, unnecessary stress for you. You should forget all that. And I will, I'll, I will tell you that, uh, for me personally, I believe that I read I was at a young age, I was when I was in my very early 20s, I read on, on Zen, on Bodhidharma, Bodhidharma. And I think his, his teachings are very interesting that, that really uh, we, we have a, a, a truer self within ourselves, not, not this mind that always identify you with identity, with you with the with, with, with the check tag, with ego, but a real true self existing self that really is your deeper self. Anyway, I hope that you would enjoy yourself and you would be able to gain something from my uh, half an hour talk here.